are like crazy, whether you're in New York, whether you're in L.A., or whether you're in Durham, North Carolina, or D.C. So I will say um, the college Democrats are goal. So what I did <clears throat> from college Democrats was on the national board, so we fought for a lot of issues as a whole. But I will say one thing that I noticed is, like, states had very specific issues. Um, so you would notice that from states. So, for instance, like I know, like, the, the when I was talking to some of the students in Maryland, um, they were passionate about fighting for things in regards to the highway that's trying that they're trying to build in um, Maryland and displacing people because they're trying to create a way to um, cut down the transportation. But they're saying that also the highway that they're trying to move here would be problematic because it would be displacing several communities. Um, and then you have just so many different issues in different states um, until I noticed um, or how College Democrats work because it works per state, so it's pretty state specific. Um, but those are, you know, it, it really varies from each state, um, some of the issues that I would hear. Definitely. And it seems to me like it, you've not just been involved in politics, but it seems to me that you've been involved in a lot of different things. So what are some of the other things that you were involved in in addition to politics? I think when I looked at your bio, I thought you were also involved in, it looks like your frat as well, sorority. I said frat. That's for the guys. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm I'm very involved um, with my sorority. I I, I love doing that. I'm a, I'm a Delta Sigma Theta sorority incorporated. Um, another thing is I <clears throat> love to run, um, and, and that's really awesome. And um, I guess those are kind of like my main hobbies. <laughs> but I love to definitely just go out and, and be involved in the community and just doing whatever I can to give back. Um, I think that's that's something that I really enjoy. Now, were either of your parents involved in politics and any any level, or were they involved in activism at all? Because that's one of the other things I was going to mention earlier is that one of the things that I've seen you do a lot of is be involved not just in the what I call the grind of the day-to-day political activism, but I've also seen a lot of youth that are involved more on causes. So they may not necessarily be involved in, say, the Democratic Party or the Republican Party or even some of the um, fringe parties. But then they'll be very much involved in, like, say, the fight against the death penalty or involved in, like, um, issues around education or issues around LGBT rights. So it seems to me that that's one of the things that I have seen our youth doing more of is being engaged in cause-related things, not just the politics, but also cause-related. Yeah. Um, so in regards to the first part, um, my parents aren't too politically active. Um, they always They always knew the importance of, you know, being involved politically and definitely, um, you know, showed up to the polls and did did the base, uh, did things of that sort. Um, but then in regards to people being active with issues, I definitely do see that a lot. Um, you know, on my campus, we have like a Students for Immigrants Right Club, um, the Democratic Socialists of America, which dealt with like a lot of social issues um, and, and quite a few other clubs. So I definitely will say I have noticed that with <clears throat> issues, I know me, Personally, I decided to, to be more involved with the Democratic Party as a whole because I, I feel as though that covers um, a lot of the issues that I believe in or that I want to stand for. And um, ultimately, like, I want, to, I want to be a part of, you know, all of it and see what I can do to help with everything. So I know that's personally why I got involved with the Democratic Party on the large scale as a whole. But I do definitely see a lot of students um, getting involved with issues, especially a lot of social issues. Um, that's definitely been a major push. And you used the term earlier, and it's a term that I've heard in politics, and I actually love the term. I consider myself one as well. But you used the term progressive. And I was just wondering, do you sometimes find that the people on the other side try to paint that as something that is not necessarily – because, you know, they try to make it sound as if everything that is progressive means that you automatically want to be a socialist or a communist or one of the other kind of political things out there. And actually some of their platforms and some of their things that they have as part of their agenda – aren't necessarily bad things for our country. But I was just wondering, you as a activist yourself, do you sometimes find that, say, uh, on your own campus when you were in college, that the people on the opposite side would try to paint y'all, as, say, instead of the college Democrats, the college socialists or the college, uh, the college communists, meaning that y'all were of the, having views that were a little bit more to the left of what they thought the mainstream was? I mean, you definitely get that where people just try to <clears throat> try to make things sound more extreme or anything like that. And I think they try to do that to just try to build up more morale on their side. Um, <clears throat> but honestly, at the end of the day, like, I know what I'm standing for and I know it's right. And I know um, that also, and I think also, too, you stand bold in what, in what you want. Um, <laughs> stuff that moves forward. There's always uh, redrafting of bills, things like that, and compromises. 
Um, so, you know, ask for everything that you want up front. Um, and then, you know, with the, you know, that's when you fight for the legislators and things like that to tag on. Um, and then ultimately when it gets to <clears throat> Congress or whatever your bills, it's, it, there's going to be some kind of compromise. But I say we, we stand and fight for everything that we want and get everything that we can. Definitely. And um, just you yourself, who are some of the people that inspired you politically? Are there certain political leaders that have inspired you that you actually kind of model yourself after, whether they're on a national platform or whether they're on a local platform, but people that you really admire and that you go to when you need advice on the political scene? Um, so I can say nationally my role model or the person I really look up to <clears throat> is Cory Booker. I think he's really awesome from just following him as someone when he got started. He got started as, as an organizer. Um, I was literally reading, reading how he was, like, stayed outside um, for certain days in, like, a, a fast just to protest violence in the community. And um, I like how he got involved and he saved, like, a woman from her burning house and so many other things. I know I even went to, like, an event um, <clears throat> where he spoke, and he literally waited for the last person um, to leave that event. And there were so many other people that just came and, and left, um, and it was, like, a protest. It was during – everything with the Affordable Care Act, and I liked how he stayed for the last person, and there's just so many things about even how he was bold when it came to <clears throat> pushing out the thing about Brett Kavanaugh and the truth about um, racial profiling, how he literally even put his feet on the line just to fight for what he believed in, and that's the kind of person that I really look up to on a large scale um, and somebody that I would really aspire to be like. And then in regards to um, someone who's personal in my life and in politics and who I aspire to be like, it's my mentor. Um, her name is Ms. Valeria Levy. Um, she used to be the second vice chair of the North Carolina Democratic Party, and I think she's just so awesome with fighting for everything that she believes in in the community. She's a she's a constant fighter, and and she she definitely makes sure that um, <clears throat> she fights for what's right. So I just I really admire her energy and her passion for the party, and she's somebody that I also hope to be like one day. And what do you think of uh, Reverend Barber's Poor People Campaign? Because that's something that he definitely seems to be trying to incorporate the youth vote in what he's been organizing. So I was just wondering what some of your thoughts were on Reverend Barber and the Poor People's Campaign. Um, I definitely do. I think it's a great, great, great thing. Um, there's somebody that I actually know um, from Arkansas um, who's really a, a major leader in it. Her name is um, Maria Menez, but she, she has told me a lot about it, and she's looped me in on a lot of things, and I think it's a great movement. It's something – um, that's necessary to making sure that we're inclu very inclusive of everyone. Definitely. That seems to be something that uh, the Democratic Party has definitely been trying to do is make sure that more of us are included in uh, the political scene because there have been several disenfranchised groups, and it seems that one of the things that they're trying to do is unify people. Now, one of the things that the other party tries to do sometimes is divide folks, even if they should be unified together. I know, like, even – in our own campaigns and everything, you'll oftentimes find the people on the right trying to, say, divide the church people with the folks that are supporters of LGBT rights because of thinking that they are parallel opposites, even though at the end of the day, a lot of the issues that both parties or both groups are trying to fight about are common sense issues that affect all of us. And I think it's really important to focus more on, like, our commonalities than our, than our differences, because if we focus on what we have in common, it's going to help move us together. If we keep focusing on the differences and what we don't like, we're going to end up with, like, another 2016. So I think that's, that's really important, being inclusive of everyone at every walk of life and focusing on what we have together and, and focusing on our main goal. Yeah, I would definitely agree with you on that. Now, we got about five minutes to go before we wrap everything up and everything, but what advice would you give to other folks that want to get involved in local politics, whether they're in New Jersey where Dean is at, whether they're here in North Carolina, or whether they're wherever they're at? My advice is if you have an urge and you see something that's wrong or that you don't agree with, you know, get up and go out and do something. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's us. Just, you know, at the end of the day, the politicians are here to represent us. Um, and so with that, make sure that your voice is heard. Make sure that you, you have a part. You know, contact your local party. Con write letters to your members of Congress. Do whatever you have to do to make sure that your voice is heard because at the end of the day, these people are making decisions on your behalf. Um, so, yeah, get involved. Definitely. Oh, and real quickly, I have alluded to it earlier, but for those people that are, I say, of another generation and have that argument about the youth being involved, what is your counter argument to them that you would give to them to let them know that they need to have the youth more involved and able to even be involved in the organizations? I know that even some of our organizations, like some of the PACs, seem to be having more youth votes than they have had in the past. And there are, you know, definitely some of the old guard that sometimes get frustrated by that. But it seems to me that that's a good thing 
to have folks involved in bringing fresh energy? At the end of the day, you know, the youth, we're coming, we're here. Um, you can obviously see it with um, Congress and how many more young people or younger members of Congress are in office. Um, and at the end of the day, we're moving forward to the next generation and the, the future leaders. And so it's time for the future to have, or the people, our future leaders to have a say about the future. Um, so we're here and we're, we're coming. So definitely make room because here we are. <laughs> Sounds wonderful, Blake. And last but not least, um, if you had a message for that person whose name we refuse to mention as often as possible, we just call them that person, if you had a message for the person currently sitting in that office, what would your message be to him? Maybe maybe you've already expressed it on Twitter or Facebook, but if you had a chance to personally talk to him, what would your message be? My message would be your time is dwindling down. We're coming for the White House in 2020. Sounds like a great message. The 2020, is, he needs to get ready to pack his bags and head on out. Uh, he needs to find some other career other than that, or maybe he'll just give up and retire altogether and not even try business because I don't think that the business world necessarily <laughs> needs them either. Maybe it's just time for him to sit back and retire. I, I, I would agree. <laughs> Sounds wonderful. Thanks for joining us here, Blake. Definitely glad to have you on, and uh, we'll get ready to wind it up and everything. Uh, Dean, you got any parting words for the folks as we got about uh, three more minutes to go? Uh, it was a great show tonight, man. All of our guests, we thank them for being with us tonight. And um, as I always say, man, when you walk outside your front door, it's showtime, and the world is your stage. Just make sure that people are not watching the rehearsal. With that being said, this is Six Man Dean Geronimo wishing y'all an outstanding week. And we will see you. In fact, who we got going on next week, Mark? Hey, next week we got some more amazing guests. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go look up exactly who we've got. But I know we've got some amazing guests that will be on. So if you hold on one second, I'll be able to tell you who they are. But in the meantime, since we've got about three minutes, if you will look on there, you will see that there's about a two-minute and 56-minute cut called Terry G's music if you will put that on i will look it up who we've got and i may have you faded out eventually and we will definitely have part of that interview that i conducted yesterday online and we'll, that may be part of the show either next week or the week after but if you will hit terry g's music um and that's j-e-e and then i will also find out exactly who we've got all right here it is Don't 